Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday morning. It's Stephen Whiteside here from theuptrend.com. In the pre-market this morning, stock index futures are currently trading above fair value with the NASDAQ uh, leading the futures higher. Uh, commodities are very quiet in the pre-market this morning while Bitcoin continues to move up. Uh, currently, it's up another $1,200 on Wednesday morning. Now, we don't have any major economic numbers coming out today. We do have energy inventories later in the morning, but uh, some days the, the market pauses for the Fed announcement. And uh, today, the market may pause for the NVIDIA announcement. Their earnings come out after hours on Wednesday. Well, in percentage terms, the big winner on Tuesday was the gold sector with both the uh, GDX and the XGD uh, both uh, closing just above the upper channel line. I personally would uh, hold off on this and wait uh, and see if we can close above the upper channel line once again. Uh, both these charts have nice gaps there. And I think uh, yesterday you might have seen an overreaction. Uh, there was a lot of uh, tension in the market yesterday. We saw a lot of downward pressure in the stock market, but it uh, recovered going into the close. So I might hold off on those today. Or if you're uh, really interested in the sector and uh, want to get in, then take a 50% position and then add to it again if we get another close above the upper channel line. Now, in percentage terms, the next big winner after the gold sector was the Magnificent 7, and that particular ETF was up 1.82% on the day. Uh, looking at uh, the big winner in that sector, of course, was NVIDIA, which is up nearly 5% and back on a daily buy signal ahead of the earnings today. So traders bidding NVIDIA back up. Now, in percentage terms, the big winner on uh, Tuesday was Supermicro, up over 31%. It's back on a buy signal. Would I take that buy signal? No, absolutely not. Yes, they got a new auditor, but that doesn't mean the auditor is going to like what they find and they could also walk away. So a uh, highly risky trade, uh, you know, if you're looking to have some fun and some excitement in your life and need extra stress, then Supermicro is the right place for you. Just a reminder, based on uh, yesterday's close, we still have to go up 334% and change to get back to the 2024 high. Now, looking at the NASDAQ 100, it did close above the top of Friday's uh, trading range, so that could be bullish. Uh, we're up 0.69%. Now, if you look at the equal weighted NASDAQ, it is still trading within Friday's trading range and was up po just 0.9% yesterday. So when you take NVIDIA out of the equation, uh, we don't get as much bang for the buck. Uh, the next generation NASDAQ was up just under a quarter of a percent, uh, still hasn't broken out above Friday's high. Now, there's still lots of gaps on these charts. And when we look at the NASDAQ 100, our next mathematical price target is 507.81. Now, the top of that gap is at 507.77. And uh, so that could be a potential target and an area of resistance. And we need a close above 507.56 to give us a buy signal. And as you can see with all these numbers and yesterday's close, yes, we did get back up above the $500 level. Now, yesterday, there's, I guess, rumors that World War III was about to start, and that sent uh, stock index futures tumbling, especially in the Dow. And uh, the Dow ended the day uh, closing lower and certainly broke through Friday's low. Uh, even though the Dow has NVIDIA in it now, uh, only 11 of the 30 stocks were up on the day, and it still closed lower on the day. Uh, the biggest loser on the Dow yesterday was United Health, and then followed by 3M, which is back on a sell signal. And uh, then we've got Nike making a new low for this move on Tuesday. If we look at what worked and what didn't work in the U.S. market, it was uh, information technology, of course, and then communication services. What didn't work yesterday, well, they weren't big losers at all and certainly didn't uh, change anything for uh, the energy sector or uh, the financials. They were both down slightly yesterday. The healthcare sector continues to move lower. So we had a lot of selling last week in pharmaceuticals, biotechs, and healthcare stocks. And that looks like it's continuing this week. Uh, looking at uh, some of those uh, healthcare stocks, uh, Insight was down uh, sharply yesterday, down over 8%. And Moderna, uh, you know, standing looking at the chart, it doesn't look like much happened yesterday, but it was down five over 5% 5 yesterday. So uh, when a stock has been uh, pummeled as much as this one, uh, you know, your eyes can deceive you. But there we are, closing down over 5%. Looking at the Canadian market, uh, the iShares for the TSX 60 ended the day up $0.03 cents on the day. 
And uh, we dipped into the channel yesterday, so it closed below $37.63 on Wednesday would give us a sell signal. 33 out of the TSX 60 stocks were up on the day on Tuesday. Uh, materials, which of course includes the gold stocks, were up 1.7%. Then utilities up just over half a percent. Communication services up uh, a quarter of a percent. What didn't work yesterday? Well, consumer staples were down sharply on the day. That had a lot to do with George Weston. And of course, Loblaws and George Weston are attached at the hip. Uh, we also saw the industrial sell down yesterday. Uh, we had Magna back on a sell signal and uh, Canadian uh, National Railway, CNR, uh, was down on the day, making a new low for this move. And, you know, if you're considering this stock, you just need to know that we make making a series of lower highs and lower lows. So, you know, you have to expect that pattern to continue until it stops continuing. Now, moving on to the bond market, we did see some buying in bonds yesterday, not enough to give us a buy signal, but put some downward pressure on yields on Tuesday. We'll be watching that closely to see if those trends change. Uh, the U.S. dollar index had a pullback yesterday. We saw the euro uh, up slightly on the day, a little more activity in the Canadian dollar trading back up into the channel on Tuesday. And let's finish off looking at commodity prices. Uh, crude oil moved up on the day yesterday. We need to close above $72.60 on the uh, USO to give us a buy signal. That would join gasoline and natural gas already on buy signals. Now, copper moved up on the day, still trading and closing below the lower channel line. And there's a nice gap there. Uh, we saw the uh, GLD move up yesterday, looking for a close above $244 on Wednesday to give us a buy signal. Currently trading down 89 cents in the pre-market. It was up $2.16 yesterday. Of course, any pre-market number that I mentioned in the video is going to change by the time you see this video. Now, we've got uh, Palladium and Platinum both back on buy signals as of Tuesday's close. And then the SLV traded into the channel for the second day on Tuesday Looking for a close above $28.65 on Wednesday to give us a buy signal for the SLV. Okay, folks, that's all for this morning's presentation. So far, it looks like it's going to be a fairly quiet open. And, uh, of course, uh, just like a Fed day, the market may pause until the NVIDIA earnings come out after hours. You have a great day. Next time you'll hear my voice is on Thursday morning. And at that time, we'll take a walk through the most actively traded stocks from Wednesday's trading action.